So in 8.5, we're actually not doing anything brand new, okay? We're not doing anything brand new. We've done this before. We've done modeling functions before using the graphing calculator, okay? We found lines and curves of regression. So that's what we're doing again today, except we are modeling now sinusoidal functions. So we've done linear, we've done quadratic, right? We've done exponential. Um, we're going to do sinusoidal today. And so I do have some, uh, I, there's a question we're going to work through. This is part of your assignment, so I, want, uh, I need everyone to do this on your calculator. You're not just watching me do it. You're going to do it on your calculator because you're going to work through some of the uh, questions later. But I do have some notes here to help you with um, how to enter the data and stuff, just in case you've forgotten. So it'll be up here uh, on the board if you look at. So <clears throat> the question is, number three, while on her nightly walks with her dog, Kelly noticed that the moon appeared to be at different angles on different days. She researched the maximum altitude of the moon in degrees and obtained this data starting on April 1st. So on day one, the angle of the moon, I, I'm assuming above the horizon here, would be 41.2 degrees. Day three, this one, and so on. So to enter this data into your calculator, we're going to take a few minutes to do that. And again, you want to get your graphing calculator. And of course, we're using the TI-83 here. So you want to go to uh, second function. Uh, sorry, you want to go to stat for this one. Uh, we won't erase anything here. Stat, stat. And then when you get to this screen, just hit enter. And you should have your lists there. Now, if you need to clear your lists, go up and highlight the list one and hit clear, not delete, but clear, and then enter. And then it should go away. Uh, all the data. So to enter the data, cho choose a list, and we're going to put the values for the day in one list and the values for the angle in another. So we're going to take a few minutes. I want everybody to plot this into your calculator just to make sure that um, we're all getting the same numbers, okay? Yeah, so stat, enter, and then the days are going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, and the angle. So take a few minutes. Okay, so um, again, you've got the numbers in the list. Again, we only have two lists, so when you get to the end of the row for the day, you go to the next row of days and the next row of days. So you have one continuous list all the way from 1 to 59. And then list 2 would be the angles. So we have taken a few minutes, and we've got that, so hopefully those all match up a, a prop properly to the uh, a chart there. Okay, so that's how you enter data. Now we're going to keep in mind, right, that the X list is going to be the day. So the day is the independent variable, and then the angle measure would be what would be measured on that day. So that's going to be the responding variable. So this is going to be x and y. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind. Now to plot the points, so just, and again, this hopefully should be something that you do remember from before, but if not, the notes are up here. So to plot the points, you're going to want to go to second function y equals, that's the plots, and you're going to want to hit uh, enter so that we can get into plot one, let's say. Then hit enter again to turn it on, okay? So you want to get it on. Now the X lists, okay, so in mine here, mine are set to the wrong list, so I have to change that. So what you do is you use the second function and you hit number one if you want to put list one in there, and second function two to put list two. Um, the type here, just make sure it's the first one and the mark doesn't really matter so much. Okay, so you've got it on, you've got your lists properly assigned. Now the other thing they want to do is to make sure that the window fits, okay? So let's go back to our lists. The range of numbers for the X, so that's the domain really, it kind of goes from 1 to 59. So you might want to, on your calculator, let's go to window, and let's go from 0 to, let's say, 60, okay? And then for the angle, if you look at the smallest angle that we can see there, oh, I see a, what's a 16? Is that the smallest? Well, it's 16. So let's, I mean, let's go like 10 or something. So down to Y, let's go 10, just under 16. And then what's the largest angle here? There's a 63-ish. Yeah. So let's go to um, max, let's go to 70 or something maybe. Okay. The scale, resolution, all that doesn't matter. Just ones is fine. Okay, so let's hit graph and see. Oh, nice. Okay, so does your graph look something like that? And actually, I think I've got something extra on there. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to clear these off because I don't want those on there. I just want my points. Awesome. Is so everyone seeing this on your calculator? Yes, no, no. 
Okay, so some of you didn't have your stat plots on. Okay, make sure they're on. Make sure you got your li proper lists in there. Yes? Can I go back to the numbers? Are these ones here? They're in your textbook as well. That's okay. It's, uh, it's number three. 8.5, it's question number three. So we've got these points plotted now, and we've got them graphed. And obviously, this looks like a sine graph, right? This is very predictable. I mean, if you, if you connected those points, that looks like it would be some kind of sine graph. Here's the midline, right? So let's get the calculator to find out what that is. And again, to plot a regression function, uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to the stat menu, and then we're going to go over to calculate. Right, so we get to this calculate screen, and we want to do sine regression. Okay, so go to the calculate screen. I'll I'll do that here now. Um, so we're going to do stat, right cursor over to calculate, and then I think it's near the bottom, so I'm going to go up. Yeah, it's the very bottom. So sine reg. Hit enter. Doesn't matter if your screen is cleared or not, but you've got sine reg down there now. So now what you want to tell the calculator to do is to draw from list 1 for your x, list 2 for your y. So second function 1, comma, the commas are important, second function 2. You guys remembering this? Okay, hopefully. Now, the other thing was, we, let's, put, let's put the equation into the calculator so we don't have to recopy. Because if you have to retype, all of these values is going to be a nightmare. So let's get the calculator to do that for us, and this is how you would do that. So in VARS here, we're going to go VARS, right cursor, and then we're going to do function, and then let's put it in Y1. So we're going to put it, we're going to input it in, get the calculator to do the work for us. So it's going to find a sinusoidal regression function, and it's going to put it into the calculator. So now you hit enter, and hopefully we all should have very, very similar numbers once this thinks for a few seconds. That's a long time to think. Oh, there we go. A lot of data points, I guess. Okay, so here are the data points. An A value of 22, that's like the amplitude, right? A B value of 0.23. So that's between 0 and 1. That's going to be stretched out this way. A C value of 0.2, so it's going to move to the right, just slightly. And then it's going to move up from 0, up 40 units or so. So if you hit y equals, all those numbers should automatically be populated in there already. Right? It's again, save you lots of time. If you have to recopy this in, you don't have to use all the decimal places. Use, use four decimal places, probably fine. So now we hit graph, and hopefully we have the points and a pretty nice regression uh, curve there. Sinusoidal regression. Oh, okay. So, all right. So some of you just have like almost like a straight line here. Here's the thing. We need to go to radian. Your calculator might be in degrees. If it's in degrees, it's going to look, okay, this is what it'll look like if it's in degrees. You're going to have the points, then you're going to have this. That's not good. So we need to do radians. So you hit mode, the mode button. Make sure that your calculator is in radians, okay? Then everything should work out fine. Okay. So for those of you that are at this point, all right, here are the questions from number three from your assignment. It says graph Kelly's data, okay, estimate the period. So again, from your calculator, you can sort of estimate what the period is. And you can, estimating, you can kind of hit trace and you can move that cursor over if you want. Um, well, let's see. So figure out the y values here, or the x values, sorry, 34, uh, and then the other crest, you go back over there. So you could estimate what the um, period would be. So it would be the difference between about 34 and 8. Okay, so we're looking at about what? 26. So that would be your estimate. Determine the equation. We did that. So you want to write the equation down, y equals 22.9542, or whatever, just to four decimal places, sine of 0 0.2303, and so on. And then I'll get you guys to work on D, E, and F on your own for a few minutes. Okay, girls? Got that? You're working on number three here. If you're having trouble graphing the data, I'll come around and help you. But work on uh, 3A to F. So we've, we've done A, B, and C together.
So you're going to uh, just do a rough sketch. You're going to write down what the function is uh, that you got in your calculator. Okay. And then for D, now for D, what you want to do... Is that unfrozen now? So for D, what's the maximum angle of the moon? All right, you could look at the data points, but the points that were plotted aren't necessarily the very maximum points. So that's where we have to use the line. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the graph, and then let's say, I know those points are looking like they might be maximum, but we want to use the graph. So remember how we calculated the maximum point? So second function trace gets you to calculate menu. Number four is the maximum. So It'll ask you for boundaries. Remember, left bound. So on the, the line, or the curve here, the sine curve, you're going to put your cursor just to the left of what would be looking like the maximum point. Then you're going to hit enter, and then you're going to go to just beyond to the right side, and you're going to enter again, and it'll, it'll form little two little arrows that are the boundaries, and then just hit enter for a guess. And it should give you the Y value now should be the maximum point. So if we have this as a maximum point, great. But we aren't guaranteed that we have that maximum point. So this is how you would do that. So 63.2 would be your answer for D. Okay, 63.2 degrees. 63.2. All right, so then let's take a look at E together. Estimate the altitude of the moon in degrees on day 100. Okay, well, day 100, that is on the X, right? The days are on the X. So if we just did calculate a value, we could put in 100 here. Okay. Let's do two. Sorry? Oh, yeah, because we're not, okay, because what day are we on? That's right. So our data only goes to, uh, where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, 59, right? Okay. So day 100, thank you. That's exactly right. So we're going to change our window setting for the X max there. Let's go to 10 something over 100, right? So it's going to look like this now. Our data points run out, but our graph keeps going, and that's again the beauty of these regression functions. You can go beyond the data points and project according to those, that pattern. So now we'll do it and enter 100. And so the angle of the moon should be 23.2778 degrees, or whatever, 23.3 if you want. Okay? So what's the angle of the moon on day 123.3? All right, so F, let's finish off with F here. What's the first day in May that the altitude of the moon will drop below 30 degrees? Okay, so the altitude, again, is the, are the Y values. So we need to find out where it drops below 30, but in May. It does say in May. So... Remember, this data started, I think it was April 1st, did, it, did it not say? So April 1st. So if this is April 1st, then this is going to be May 1st here, right? 31. So we want to look after day 31, where does, it, um, uh, where does it drop below 30 degrees? So that's where we're going to want to... You could use your trace and just trace the graph out. But the way to do this exactly, guys, remember, is to uh, let's do another line here. And let's, let's find out where, well, we could find out where 30 degrees is, and we could graph that. And so here's the 30 degree angle. So uh, let's see. So if we kind of, OK, so this is day 17. It's going to go below 30. We're not interested in that. What about over here? What? kind of day are we on? Oh, we're on day 43, okay? So, but we're at 32.7, so it's going to be somewhere between day 43 and day 45, right? So we could say day 44, we could guess, or what you could do is instead of making this y equals 30, you could do kind of like 29.9, and then find out exactly what day that is, okay? Over there. So, that's one thing you could do as well. So I'm going to do that and see what we get for an x value. Because you've got to find now the intersection, right? So where was it? It's over. OK, so it's over here, day 43, day 44, somewhere around there. So let's do second function intersect, second function trace, intersect. 
first curve, yes. Second curve uh, is going to be this y2, yes. And then you want to find the intersection point that's right. Oops. Where is day 40? Yeah, somewhere right around here. So that's where we want to find. So it occurs at day 43.8. All right, so 43.8. So is that the 43rd day? Is that the 44th day? What is that? Day 1 is April 1st. Day 31 would have been May 1st. So we've got another 12.8 days after that. So what day is that going to be in May? I'll let, I'll let you guys figure out whether that's 12, 13, 14. Okay, for F. Okay, so um, that's number three. So that's one of the questions. We took a long time to kind of go through that. Uh, there are some, you, you should uh, work on some other questions for practice as well, but I wanted to make sure that you got three in here. So I'll show you your rest of your